The small town of Homestead had always been a tranquil and idyllic place, nestled between rolling hills and dense forests. Its streets were lined with charming cottages, and the townsfolk were known for their friendly demeanor and close-knit community. But on a chilly autumn morning, the tranquility of Homestead was shattered by the mysterious disappearance of Patricia Meehan, a beloved member of the town. Patricia was an unassuming woman in her early forties, with a warm smile and a gentle disposition. She worked at the local library, where she was adored by both the staff and the regular visitors. Her days were spent surrounded by the musty scent of old books and the soft rustling of pages turning. Patricia had never married and had no immediate family in town, but she had formed strong connections with her colleagues and the townspeople over the years. On the morning of her disappearance, Patricia followed her usual routine. She was seen leaving her quaint cottage, a cozy abode adorned with potted plants and lace curtains. She wore her favorite knitted scarf, the one her grandmother had made for her years ago, and carried a canvas bag that held her lunch and a book. She waved to her neighbor, Mrs. Jenkins, who was tending to her garden across the street and set off on her short walk to the library. The library, a charming brick building with ivy climbing its walls, was only a few blocks away from Patricia's home. She arrived at the library at precisely 9 a.m., as was her habit. Throughout the morning, Patricia went about her duties, helping patrons find books, organizing shelves, and exchanging pleasantries with those who came in. There was nothing unusual about her behavior that day, according to her co-workers. Around noon, Patricia took her lunch break. She headed to the small park adjacent to the library, a serene spot where benches sat beneath towering oak trees. She often enjoyed her meals there, lost in the pages of a novel or simply watching the world go by. But on that fateful day, Patricia never returned from her break. As the hours passed and Patricia failed to reappear, her co-workers grew concerned. They searched the library, the park, and even the neighboring streets, but there was no sign of her. Word spread quickly through the town, and soon a search party of townspeople, led by the local police, began combing the area for any trace of Patricia. Days turned into weeks, and the search efforts continued relentlessly. Flyers with Patricia's picture were posted around town, and a sense of unease settled over the once happy community. The library, usually a hub of activity and conversation, became a somber place where worried whispers replaced the usual laughter. The police interviewed everyone who had seen Patricia that morning, from her neighbor Mrs. Jenkins to her colleagues at the library. They found no leads, no evidence of foul play, and no explanation for her disappearance. Her cottage remained untouched, her beloved scarf hung by the door as a haunting reminder of her absence. In the midst of the search, theories and rumors began to circulate. Some townspeople believed Patricia had simply decided to leave, to seek a new life elsewhere. Others whispered about the possibility of an accident, perhaps a fall in the woods or an unfortunate encounter with a wild animal. And then there were those who believed in more sinister possibilities, abduction, murder, or a hidden past that had finally caught up with her. Detective Daniel Sullivan was assigned to the case, a dedicated investigator known for his sharp instincts and unwavering determination. He spent countless hours reviewing the evidence, questioning witnesses, and piecing together Patricia's last known movements. Despite his best efforts, the case remained cold, and frustration began to set in. One day, as Detective Sullivan was poring over the case files once again, he noticed something he had overlooked before. In the background of a photo taken at the park on the day Patricia disappeared, there was a figure that didn't quite fit. It was blurry and distant, but it seemed to show a person standing near the edge of the trees, watching Patricia as she sat on a bench. This discovery reignited the investigation. Detective Sullivan delved deeper into the photograph, enlisting the help of forensic experts to enhance the image. With their expertise, a clearer image emerged, revealing a tall figure wearing a trench coat and a hat, partially obscured by the trees. The detective couldn't shake the feeling that this figure might hold the key to Patricia's disappearance. 
The townspeople were shown the enhanced image, and whispers of speculation grew louder. Some claimed to have seen a similar figure in the weeks leading up to Patricia's disappearance, lurking near her cottage or observing her from a distance. Others shared tales of strange occurrences, unexplained noises in the night, and eerie glimpses of shadowy figures. Detective Sullivan's investigation took an unexpected turn when he received a tip from a resident who claimed to have information about the figure in the photograph. The informant, who wished to remain anonymous, revealed that they had seen the mysterious person near the park several times before Patricia's disappearance. According to the tipster, the figure seemed to be watching Patricia intently, as if studying her every move. With this new lead, Detective Sullivan focused his efforts on identifying and locating the person in the photograph. He reviewed surveillance footage from nearby businesses and interviewed townspeople again, hoping to find someone who could provide a clue about the figure's identity. As days turned into weeks, the pressure mounted and the entire town held its breath. Then, one day, a breakthrough came. A gas station attendant remembered seeing the person in the photograph around the time of Patricia's disappearance. They recalled a distinct detail. The person had been driving an older model car, one that was often parked near a remote trailhead in the nearby woods. This trailhead was not frequently used, as it led to a secluded area that was rarely visited by hikers. Detective Sullivan immediately organized a search of the woods surrounding the trailhead. The townspeople rallied together once more, determined to bring Patricia home, whether in life or in memory. As they combed through the underbrush and followed the winding paths, hope mingled with trepidation. Hours stretched into darkness, and just as doubt began to creep in, a faint glimmer of light appeared in the distance. In a small clearing, deep within the woods, the search party stumbled upon a weathered and dilapidated cabin. It was a place that had been forgotten by time, its windows boarded up and its walls covered in moss and vines. As the townspeople cautiously entered the cabin, their flashlights revealed a scene that sent shivers down their spines. The interior of the cabin was like a frozen tableau, frozen in time. On a dusty table sat an old typewriter, its keys gathering dust as if waiting for its owner to return. Stacks of yellowed papers were strewn across the floor, each covered in lines of text that seemed to form a narrative that no one could decipher. And in the corner of the room, there was a tattered trench coat and a hat, just like the figure in the photograph. Amidst the eerie stillness, Detective Sullivan discovered a journal hidden beneath the papers. Its pages were filled with the meticulous handwriting of Patricia Meehan. As he flipped through the journal, the truth began to unfold. In her journal, Patricia chronicled her growing unease. She wrote about the mysterious figure she had noticed observing her, the sense of being watched even within the walls of her cottage. She described her feelings of paranoia and her efforts to uncover the truth behind the figure's presence. Patricia had become consumed by her investigation, tracking the person's movements and recording her own observations. As the journal entries continued, they took on a surreal and disjointed quality. Patricia's words became fragmented, her thoughts fragmented, and her descriptions grew increasingly nonsensical. She wrote of a looming darkness that seemed to envelop her, of whispers that echoed in the night, and of strange visions that blurred the line between reality and illusion. It became clear that Patricia had become obsessed with uncovering the mystery of the figure, and her sanity had begun to unravel. The cabin, hidden deep within the woods, had become her refuge, her sanctuary from the outside world. She had retreated there to piece together the puzzle, to confront the unknown presence that had invaded her life. But in her quest for answers, Patricia had become lost in a labyrinth of her own making. The journal entries grew more frantic, the words bleeding into each other, forming a tapestry of fear and desperation. She had reached a point where the lines between reality and illusion had blurred completely, and her last entries were a series of incoherent scribbles that trailed off into nothingness. Detective Sullivan's heart ached as he read Patricia's final words. He realized that she had become a victim not only of an external enigma, but also of her own relentless pursuit of the truth. The 
townspeople gathered around him, their faces a mix of sadness and understanding. Patricia's fate was a haunting reminder of the fragility of the human mind and the depths of obsession. With the discovery of Patricia's journal, the mystery of her disappearance was solved, yet the town of Homestead was left with a profound sense of loss. The memory of Patricia Meehan lived on in the hearts of those who had known her, a reminder of the enduring impact one person can have on a community. The cabin in the woods was preserved as a memorial, a place for reflection and remembrance. The townspeople would visit, leaving flowers and tokens of appreciation for Patricia's kindness and dedication. And as the years passed, the figure in the photograph became a symbol not of fear, but of the mysteries that exist within us all, waiting to be explored, understood, and ultimately embraced. <laughs>